Well, we're catching up with uh, all the MHKs over the last uh, year of the Quail administration. And what better for year two to go to the man at the top to talk about this? It's been an interesting year, hasn't it? I yes, mean, very busy year as, as ever. Not quite what you liked in places, I'm guessing. Well, obviously there was there, there was an area where you know beyond the government's control, we we, we had the obviously attacks from certain elements of of, of the press on issues that um, you, you know on VAT on on corporate jets etc. Should sure we revisit wait. that then? As you brought it up, I mean, well, you alluded you handle- to it, so there's no point oh, ducking the know. issue, is there? Could, could you handle it better? I don't think I don't think we could. We, we we came under attack when we insisted that we'd done nothing wrong, and we were so confident we'd done nothing wrong that we invited in the UK government, um, Her Majesty's Customs and Excise, to, to carry out a review of our practices. Now we still haven't had the report. Um, I'm led to believe that there was delays at their end because when they tried to come over, there was twice now there was fog at City Airport. They couldn't get here, so I'm, I believe the report is there or thereabouts. I haven't seen it yet, but I, I remain confident that we have done absolutely nothing wrong. But the perception, it came up the other day, the perception of certain Formula One right, dr- drivers come over here to park their yeah, well, jets I, it's, and get a new one or whatever it is yeah, they do. Well, you know my views on sensational headlines, but yeah. that, that's what it was. You, you, you had a, a, for, a Formula One good-looking guy with a good-looking girlfriend and, and a nice red shiny jet, and uh, I suppose that's going to sell newspapers. But that program had- to my view, had massive holes in it. Did yeah. you ever get correction? Any apologies from the BBC? Because none, they, they repeated it yeah, on the World Service none, for like none, eight times after None that. whatsoever. However, Paul, I, I've chosen to just keep quiet. Let's have the official investigation yeah. into uh, by, by the UK government, totally independent. Bringing we another power in is, is quite a, a headline in itself, isn't it? You know, a, a foreign government, if you want to call it, and, and, and it's not quite that, but... Isn't that headline itself that you have to bring them in to do this? No, I, I knew, I, I, you know, th- this is an administration that has nothing to hide, and I knew, uh, you know, we've done nothing wrong in, in our views. But to be doubly sure and to prove that we'd done nothing wrong, we invited. They didn't ask to come in. I sent them a, a request. Would they come in? And, and look at our procedures to make sure that we were complying with the UK and, and EU so the, law. So have they got complete, you know, they can open any book, say what they can, yeah, they, they, do they, they turn up unannounced or is it more no, they, they cordial came, than they, that? They, 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 well, the first and foremost, they were coming over quarterly anyway. Yeah. We were having regular meetings with them, so it's not that we do our own thing and all, all of a sudden we've done, been done, doing something wrong for years. There's regular checks because we have to work with them and we invited them over. So I'm waiting for the report, I haven't seen it, but I, I am hopeful that it, it will vindicate the, the Isle uh, of Man. Vindicate? How do you get that message out to balance the damage, and there no doubt was collateral damage, from that original yeah. sensationalism from the, from the BBC slash yeah, well, uh, I, I the whole those papers? I don't want to preempt the report because no. I haven't seen it yet. So obviously You're waiting for that. Okay. I, I'm right. waiting for that. Was that your biggest challenge of the year? It, it, was, it was probably... Well, there's been lots of challenges. Obviously, I, I, behind the scenes, what most people don't get to see is the work on Money Valley, EU Code of Conduct Group, tax-free, beneficial ownership, and the big B, Brexit. Mm. And I that think goes big, on behind the, the, the scenes. I think another big B, a Beecroft. Yeah. <laughs> you, oh, you, very, you had a very sacking. Witty. Well, yeah. you, you let me down. It. Yeah. You, I mean, on a serious note, I mean, she, she's already done her interview with me. And yeah. she's not holding back at all that you... Well, you, she, she resigned, but you sacked her. Yeah. And if you hadn't resigned, it was going on. Yeah. And other people seem to know about this before she did, and she's not very happy about that in government. I don't know if, you know, this is obviously difficult to... But I'm just telling you that off, off straight habit. Do you think you handled that in the best way you could have done? Yeah, I mean, I had a minister who wasn't delivering. Uh, you know, Mrs Beecroft has gone down in history as the only minister, to my knowledge, to have her entire political team resign or threatened to resign if, say, if she didn't yeah, propose okay. two resigned and, and two had no confidence this in, letter in her. And all that sort yeah. Of, yes. So that's never happened before. And you know, I gave her as much time to, you know, to do the job to the best of her abilities. I genuinely wanted her to succeed. It's a department I'd put my heart and soul into before I'd moved up to Chief Minister. And there was no way I was going to put someone in there to fail. But did but, you regret giving her that job then? No, I, I gave her that job with the best of intentions, and I would be disappointed if she ever, alleg- you know, alleged no, no, no. that I that I didn't. She stood for leadership, and you yeah. gave Alf Cannon a very nice one, and mm-hmm. you gave her a very nice one. Was it not like a sort of a, well, thanks, but you know, now just get on with it and keep you, you know, don't don't rock the boat now. You're in charge of this, and well, you you, you want a success. You you you. I mean, the the Department of Health and Social Care is a really big department. 
it's lots of, there's lots of problems there and you want it to be as successful as possible. You want to improve constantly all the time the, the service we deliver to the people of the Isle of Man. You know, there was problems in the, in the north of the island which I, I was swamped with complaints from the good people of the north of the island, not happy with the way that public meeting had gone. I had the complaints from all the politicians. The, the sacking had to happen. Mm -hmm. And I tried to do it the gentlemanly way. I was disappointed with the flowers in because... The, 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 that was know, a headline in the papers, yeah, wasn't I, it? I mean, you know, you just, because that was done weeks before. Yes. I, I went I in... I had clarified that one. Yeah. yeah. And, and then after, but, but that's, that's, okay. that's life, so isn't you, it? You t any, anything else before we move looking forward? Anything looking back that you want to bring up? Well, well, well let's look at, at what this administration and Timwald, because it's not just this government, I have genuinely tried my best to work with all Timwald members and with the odd exception we've just discussed. Yeah. On the whole, all Timwald members have really put their you know, shoulder to the wheel or whatever the phrase is yeah. and, and worked hard as, as a team. So what, what have we achieved in, in, in the last 12 months, Paul? Well, we've got a 4% increase in disposable income for the, on average for the, for the people of the Isle of Man and I'm sure listeners will say, well, I haven't seen and that, but this the is the average. that's the danger when you say that. That's the biggest danger that people are going to say, well, I'm not seeing that. This is yeah, a trickle down or trickle up the, thing. Yeah, but it? these are the figures that all countries in the yeah. world use. So, yes. you know, I can't come and say, well, these are my own figures, no, Paul. No, but you know what I mean? But like, they, these are accepted <laughs> Figures. Okay, but do you, how do you think the, the, the overall feel of the Isle of Man is well, at the moment? Well, this, this administration introduced a living wage of £7.85, Paul. You know, I'm accused of being a right-wing politician, but no left-wing administration has ever introduced the living wage. Yeah. We did it. We have halved, in the last 12 months, we've halved the number of people who are unemployed. I think it's down to 300 so it's, it's or something. it's a good news story. You... At the moment, you're, as your tenure, you're very happy the way things are going. The ship is sailing in the right direction. OK, well, I'll, I'll turn that one on you, Paul. You name me a country whose GDP has gone up by 7.4%, who've halved unemployment down to 0.8%, and who have a 4% increase me, is, are these figures, in, in disposable income. Are these figures yearly or quarterly or whatever? Because yearly. OK, so once a year. Is that, is, is that standard practice? So you don't know from year to year until we get that figure in. Well, well obviously... What's going on? When the Treasury Minister announced a £23 million surplus in the economy, when we planned a £3 million surplus, you knew things had to be better mm. than you had planned or, or projected. And there's 530 extra people in employment on the Isle of Man than this time last year. So you knew that the figures were going to be better than you had hoped for. But, you know... The only thing that's worrying me is that these are exceptionally good figures. You know, there's no so two. There even my biggest yeah. critics will, will have a hard job to say that yeah. it's not good. But it's keeping that, that momentum. To, yeah, next year, uh, yeah. if we only do 2%, well, you're not as successful as, well, the, as the previous year. Let's look ahead. Reshuffle time by now, surely. Getting, you know, the two-year period's passed, so you're getting halfway through the administration. You want to, you, I think last year you were saying at some point you want to see new people getting a chance to get their hands on the on the wheel of their ship. Are we there yet? Maybe, maybe not quite yet. I, I think, you know, I, I'm very happy with the Council of Ministers that they're all different talents, all different talents, that they're working hard. You know, you don't get a 7.4% increase in GDP and all the other areas that we've achieved without a team but working I, well together. But I put it to you, there are certain names that come up, you know, I hear all the time that if there's going to be a change, that's where it's going to happen. You sit around this very table. You sit there. Yeah. And you must be always going, hmm. you know, maybe maybe it's time for a little bit of a change. You can't tell me it's all, you know, well, better if you, roses here. If, if you've got a team that's working well together, why would you want to but, change it? And, and I give way, the Welsh football team in the European... <laughs> where um, are we going? Well, you know, a team... <laughs> You don't necessarily have all the top stars in it, yeah. but a team that's working together, Paul, that's the key okay, element. Me, People working together okay. achieve far more than, than having individual stars, but they're not a, not a team. Let me try this one. There yeah. are some people who look exceptionally talented yeah. who must be knocking on that door for you. Yeah. And if that's the case, someone has to go anyway. So you've got to let that cream come to the top surely at some point. Well, I, I think... You're quite right to say that there are a number of backbenchers who would make outstanding ministers. That there's no doubt in my mind whatsoever about that, and I think going forward, some outstanding potential chief ministers there too. You know, here and in the yeah. backbenchers. So that is really re reassuring. The danger is you can't let someone go if they don't go on the right terms, because then they become a you know, anti you, don't they? I yeah, mean, well, that's the trouble, isn't it? Sacking well, is never yeah, easy. Yeah, but I've already shown that when someone doesn't perform and there's problems, I, I will okay. replace them. So I, I've done that. But this, you think this year then that you steady she goes then? I, I, I don't. You're not envisaging you, anything? We, we, I'm not envisaging anything. You I'm never know what's around no, no, the corner, no. Paul. Yeah. But, okay, so let's 
conclude this now because anything else you've got planned this year that you want to personally, you know, as... Uh, oh, I should ask you that question, by the way. Did you do the split on the um, how much you do for the constituents and how much you do for government? Did you answer no, that kind of question? No, I, I did. I, I, don't, yeah, I, I don't just think it's condescending. You know, this is the positive action group. Do yeah. I, I haven't got time to be filling out forms and, and returns well, just, on just tell me that, every, five, every five minutes. Rough I'm, percentage, you know, roughly in the head. Well, I think, I, I, think I said I'd, I do about 80% government, yeah. 20% constituency. I think people expect that. You, yeah. yeah. And how do you work together, you know, representing the two guys, you know, representing your area? How's it going? Yeah, well, we have our um, meetings throughout, around the constituency. We, we, we've been around the, the areas. And, and sometimes if I'm absolutely snowed under and, and something that's not too difficult to fix comes up or, or, and doesn't need the mm. two of us to do it, I'll pick up the phone and say to Bill, look, Bill, I've got, I'm off island on, on a trip at the moment. You're working together okay? Yeah, that, but the, if there's someone with a problem, um, can, can you deal with this for me? And it, it's been fine. But okay. equally, sometimes having the chief minister pick up the phone to get a result for the constituency, then I'm more than happy. And you, you know, could be the pothole of the week, as the Iron Man newspapers would like to tell us. That that's one yeah, of the major concerns. Well, you know, I, t- I took a phone call the other day about some vulnerable person that had maybe come over from the UK and needed looking into, and I, I was able to look into that straight away. So, so anything this year, you, you know, you'd like to see passing? I mean, obviously the abortion things going through at the minute as we talk. We're recording this in September, by the way. Yeah. For transmission in October. Uh, that was a major bit of legislation. Uh, other things? Well, I'm taking key legislation through this coming year on telecommunications. I, I set up a chief minister committee to look at a new strategy on telecommunications. We're going to be licensed in future, so, aren't we? Well, no, no it, it was more to have megabits per second download speed, fibre to the household. And my aim is to have 80 to 100 yeah. percent of the whole of the island. That's of a first man. world problem, but it's so important when people buy it, houses now. Where they, it is. They, they buy where they got a good thing. I mean, yeah. about the Jersey model years ago, they were going down fibre to the door years and years ago. I mean, they ran into massive problems with it. They, they, they did massive problems and massive would you overspend. Like to see that, I, I want to see that happening, but I want to see it done as cost effective to the taxpayer as possible. Yeah, well, we've already that, altered building control now that when new developments are going on, it. you have to put ducting in. Ah, right, right. So, so it's there. So working with the telecommunications companies on the Isle of Man and with the committee, I really think we've got something exciting to take forward and I'm okay. looking to take that to Timwald in the near future. Planning reform, if, if we're working on that, we've now got a 100% improvement and satisfaction with our work permit regime with the industry that, than we had a year ago with oh, the changes that we okay. made and, and that was... Are you still for getting rid of them? Are you no, for no, getting, I, or just I, la- relaxing I, it? I, I was for re- make, relaxing it in the key areas so yeah. the unions didn't want me to touch it, the business yeah. community wanted me to do away with it. We, we about came about getting rid of them, and, you know, it's like a, with a sunset clause, you know, so it could come back in a year's time just to test the water. Have you thought that was a way well, to go? I think if, if you can give a, a work permit within 24 hours and we've got a 90% Target, we know that we've That's hit. a lot better than it was. Yeah. Yes. 24 hours, automatic for the partner, yeah. which it wasn't before, yeah. and, and the five year work permit so that you can get a mortgage. If you come over, you know, if you go to a bank and you say, well, I've got a two year work so permit. It should never be the work permit thing now that is the block in the system. Yeah. Or should well, well, not only that, speaking to some of the senior business community who are new to the island, they say they like the idea that the Isle of Man vets mm-hmm. who comes over here, they feel safe as a result of that. So it's making sure that. You know, I, I think we're here to help business grow because at the end of the day, if the Treasury Minister hasn't got the income coming in, then the money can't be given to well, health social care. you had a great year last year, didn't you? you yeah, were... but, but you, know, you have to remember in 2021, end 21, 22, Paul, the public sector pension fund runs out and we will then have to, out of um, government's income, find the money to cover that deficit. And, and that's what we're working towards. That's been part of this administration's okay. plan. That's true. I mean, we can sit for a long time, but I know you're yeah. the type of time. Um, how do you rate yourself out of 10 this year? I didn't rate myself last year. I'm pushing people this I, year. I'm, no, well... Because you now know I'm going to no, ask you that. Last year, I think I, I, think I said the government I gave it an well, 8. Uh, okay. So I'll, I'll do the government We've one. done the government one, but you've got I'm gonna to give, I'm going to give government an 8 and a half. How do you rate yourself then? Oh, my, my, my standard answer, I've done the best I can. I can't do any Should better. I, rate you? I mean, do you, want, do you want people to rate you? Do you want people to phone in? You <laughs> no, if you can't rate yourself, it, I just think that's kind of, it's not good enough nowadays. I'm asking a simple question. Even if you say the safe seven, I will take it. No, you know. I, I, I would give myself a better than seven, right. but I, I have high standards that I want to achieve the very best for the people of the Isle of Man. So, Nine? No, well, you, it's higher than a, higher than a seven. Okay, Paul, but, I, but all I can say is okay. I can't do any more. Fine. Okay. I've done my absolute best, and I will continue to give it my 100% best for the, the, you know, the rest of the time I'm Chief Minister. 